Caution. Entertainment banter uses language that might be inappropriate for some listeners. And as always, do not try to feed us during the pod. We can't get it. Welcome back to Entertainment Banter this evening with Joel. And Matt. How you doing? Hey. hey. (laughs) So, for tonight's topic... It's a very interesting topic for me because, I don't know, I, I was actually talking to Joel about it the other day, and uh, we talk about entertainment a lot, but we, what we haven't talked about in a while is uh, how entertainment is brought to us. And if you think about it, I was thinking mostly about television for me, personally. Um, that's what we grew up with, though. That's what we grew up with. Uh, oh, television used to have, you know, start out with very few channels. You're talking like three channels, ABC, NBC. CBS, uh, they had PBS. Basic and, cable. Uh, yeah. You know, real basic. It wasn't even cable. It was like the air channels, you know, what you would consider digital channels. How, old are we going, how far back are we going back? Hey, I'm just saying. I'm, I'm going as far back as what that. What year was this? 1683? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shut up. Didn't we have like 13 channels, like the original like 13? Well, I think that? it depends on where you lived because mm. oh, I, uh, I can tell you as a child, I was an army rat, so I lived in a lot of different states. And for the most part, and now out of state too out of the country. Uh, the television channels were pretty much the consistent and, and based on where you were, there was only a very select few. Uh, they started to come out with other, I remember the birth of Fox, the first Fox channel, you know, with Arsenio Hall and a couple other things like 21 Jump Street first started there, Married with Children started there. I love Married with uh, Children. The Tracy Ullman Show. It's funny you mentioned Fox. I just want to say this real quick. Uh-huh. When I was younger, yes. I actually thought Fox meant 11 because in my city sure. fox was a fox 11 right? of course so right. when i when i went down to san diego for comic con or i went over here i'm like what's on channel 11 i figured it was always fox <laughs> it's not right right i was bummed out then well tracy ullman show which gave birth to the simpsons, simpsons. Yeah. all that stuff mm-hmm. and so like that was a new exciting channel and like i don't know if it was upn or something and then later got bought out or maybe it was something before upn i can't even remember mm-hmm. but the reason why i'm getting to this is because a while back, uh, Saturday morning cartoons officially ended. Uh, as cable grew and more channels became apparent, they felt the need that we already have like Nickelodeon, we already have Cartoon Network, we have all these other kid channels, Disney channels, whatever, that no one cares about Saturday morning cartoons anymore. And that was when you can only get cartoons. Right. Well, this is what I'm getting at. And Everyone I, waited all week for that. It's kind of interesting how the dynamic of how we get our media has changed. Because as children, we were forced, at least for my generation, we were forced to be disciplined. In the sense that you could only watch cartoons between the hours of, I don't know, what, like maybe 2 to 4 in the afternoon. like, And only certain channels would designate that two-hour time slot. Mm-hmm. For certain cartoons, and then that was it. And that like was Scooby Doo, right? Or anything else that came out for me in the '80s, you know, Transformers, GI Joe. It's also back when parents could still hit your children. <laughs> yes, it's true. <laughs> but the point I'm making is, it was designed for when kids got out of school, they got a little treat, they could watch their shows, and then when mom and dad got home, well, it was time for mom and dad's programming, the news, and then sitcoms would and, come on at six and, or seven. and then the more serious stuff. Like for example, but they did that because of. Uh, Marketing because they knew kids got home from school. There's no point to play cartoons during the day because no kids watching it. That's true. So that's when they started playing it. And but, it was, there was none of that really educational shit they have on TV sure. now that they have all well, that. Well, and if you were to play sick or get sick, you know, as a kid, you'd, you'd be watching Price is Right. Price is Right and the soap operas. You Don't know, we're gonna new to your kids, boys. Yes, boys absolutely. So it's interesting because now, uh, with all like I said, all these channels and cable and stuff. They got rid of all that. So there's no discipline in waiting because, this is getting to my next point, huh. even cable is obsolete because now cable has uh, is trying to – someone else is destroying cable. It's kind of like how the, the music video killed the rock star kind of thing, whereas now cable is destroyed by things like Netflix and uh, iTunes and Hulu. Hulu. You know, Amazon Prime. Although Hulu, in my way, is a, is a sketchy version of cable. It is. You know what I'm saying? You're paying for advertisement. Yes. Just like when you bought cable. Yes. You're paying for all that. But you, back then, you didn't think anything of it. You thought you were just natural thing. Pay right. for the cable television. Pay for AT&T. Pay for Comcast. Pay for whatever. Whatever provider you have. Yep. Verizon. And then, like, you just got the TV and commercials came with it. Right. So, but here's the thing. So, the way cable is combating it and losing is 
with Netflix, you can watch an entire season in a day. You know, and if you take that and run back to what I was talking about earlier when TV was, you know, I wouldn't say new, but what it's nothing like it was back then. Mm -hmm. what, you know, you had to wait a week. If, you know, JR got shot, you had to wait a whole week to find out what happened. Sometimes JR. <laughs> he got in Dallas. Uh-uh. <laughs> okay. I have no idea. <laughs> Anyways, I, it's funny because you had to wait a week. Sometimes you had to wait till the next season. And there's another show that would fill Dallas's time slot until the new seasons, like the new year started, depending on how it was. So it's funny how now we are so impatient as a society to watch these things instantly on Netflix or Amazon or wherever else. I just thought it was it's, it's destroying how we used to live. And it's funny because um, cable is desperately trying to keep up with it by doing what? Now what they do is they'll do... Family Guy, and it's running like nine episodes at a time on like TBS, TBS or whatever. And so now it's like you've got these channels are like turning into marathon channels. You might as well just have a channel called The Big Bang Theory because all they do is play The Big Bang Theory anyways, which defeats the purpose of cable. And you might as well just get something like Netflix. And there's only a few shows people are patient for because just because they get made so slowly because they're such good quality. Right. And that's why they take so long to come out. People are willing to wait for those. And some of those like are the still Walking Dead or HBO uh, shows like Game of HBO Thrones. HBO Game of Thrones, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Or AMC doing even like Breaking Bad back in the day. So let me ask you this as a question. Do you think society has lost something by being able to get instant access to stuff? Do you think it, it robs society of joys? Now let me explain. <laughs> Um, you don't let me answer the damn question. Well, I know, but I'm just going to give you one example. <laughs> All right? Holiday specials or any special in particular. You really want to talk about holiday specials. No, no, no. I'm, or I'm saying I'll, I'll give you another example. <laughs> the Ewok Adventures. I don't know if you've ever seen those or remember those. But George Lucas created two movies that were designed to be specials. And they were only going to be aired on television at a certain time. Once, like this one time, you know, this one year, they mm -hmm. said, hey, we're going to do this Ewok special. So if you wanted to see the Ewok special, you had to go to this channel. You had to go at this time. Now, mm -hmm. granted, you could tape it, whatever. But that's my point is it was designed to bring the family together. Like, hey, kids, normally we'd be watching Miami Vice. But instead, we're going to watch the Ewok special. It was, it was made for that channel specifically for this special event to bring families together. So now kids could get excited by the end of the week, watch it with their families or whatever. I'm not saying it has to be the Ewok Adventure. It's also saying, back when uh, only families had one TV, really. Yeah. And TVs were too That's expensive. true. That's true. Um, but no one has two television sets. <laughs> but my point I'm making is... back to the future. Yeah, back to the future. future. Yeah. He's joking. But the point I'm making is, do you think society has lost something special because of something like that. Uh, yeah. Because you no longer have I didn't it. even like, it didn't ring a bell until we started talking about it, <clears throat> actually. You brought up saying that people are this generation is impatient now. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's amazing how we are. We just feel like every second of the day we have to be doing something. And when we get our phones, how we get media, how we get news, how we get anything now, it's instant to our phone. Even, you know, we used to go to stores and buy things. Then it'd be instant gratification. You buy it. Right. Now we're all like, I got Amazon Prime, man. It takes two days to get to me and it's already here. Yeah. And it's like, we want things instantly, but we don't want to do anything for that instant. Does right. that make sense? Yes. So when you said that we were, you know, we were patient, not we were, we used to be patient to, for the TV, you know, for TV mm -hmm. shows that would come. I mean, some people are. I mean, I wait once a week for Walking Dead tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Right. AMC. <laughs> Love it. Um, not paid by that at all. AMC, if you're listening. Although if AMC wants to. Yeah, we'll, we we'll will talk about AMC all <laughs> night if AMC wants to pay us. Yes. But <clears throat> I would wait for that because I'm patient and I grew up with that generation. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, Netflix released the whole season of the new show Jessica Jones from, from Marvel. They also were just, you know, back in the day, we were releasing full seasons of House of Cards, right. you know, The Orange and the New Black. They're good TV shows yeah. they, they make themselves. Right. And it's awesome they do that because you never get left on a cliffhanger. And sometimes you need to be left on that cliffhanger right. to make you think about it the week. You know what I do? 
Mm-hmm. After I watch that episode of Walking Dead now? Yes. Literally. Or Game of Thrones? Yes. Since there's no other more episodes, I have nothing else to do about it. And it's still fresh in my mind. I literally turn the TV off, pick up my phone, and I research news, The Walking Dead, and I have to see people's reviews on it just mm-hmm. to see like what other people caught on it and what I didn't catch. Yes. Because that actually adds to the show to me. Of course, absolutely. it really does. So you're saying if you now were to kids, watch all through all through it, you would miss stuff. You you would definitely miss stuff. You That's definitely do. And I kind of want to go back and watch some House of Cards, just because it's a great show. But I'm probably going to see things I miss stuff. And you always miss things, even if you take your time mm-hmm. and you forget things. Of course, but you're going to miss things. But I was going to go. My point was that uh, kids these days are so impatient mm-hmm. that that they need that. Right. They need to see it instantly. They want to have it whenever they want it. it it's not like I need to have a set time. Does that make sense? Like if yeah. Fox said, you want to come watch, you know, Family Guy at 9 o'clock, kids these days are like, I'm not waiting then. Right. I'll wait for the next day. Well, you know, I'll watch something the day before that I was waiting, you know. I'll DVR that. Screw that. I want it on my own time. And that's kind of like, it's cool because now TV's not controlling you. But it's controlling you even more in a sure. sense. Does that make sure. sense? Absolutely. Well, you know what's interesting? Listening to you talk just now, it made me think about something because I didn't think about the idea of, I mean, we do it. At least my generation, I feel like we've done it in the past. At least we had to because we didn't have Netflix. But you're right. We would sit down and we'd analyze it. We'd talk about it. We'd go to like the lunch, you know, next day, talk about lunch. Did you see this? Yeah. Or whatever the case would be. That's a great point because... Today you would, you would analyze too, like yeah, what could happen. In that's that right. Episode. But today you don't have that opportunity to do that because you can instantly go watch the next thing. So here's the thing. Sometimes there are shows still that are on TV that make you wait, like sure. Once Upon a Time on ABC, right. Gotham, all those kind of shows. But my point that I'm making is, you could, you have the choice to go ahead. Now, if you stay with me for a second, let's think about this. Movies for us as Carry Me, Baby Bird. I know as as. As kids, there were certain movies that I enjoyed. And why did I enjoy them? Because let's say I didn't own the movie, right? Because back then we weren't rich. We weren't buying DVDs left and right in the $5 Walmart bid. You know, like, you know, I remember paying... It was VHS 20... probably back then. Yeah, v- it was VHS or Beta, and they were like $27 when they first came out. Holy, really? Yeah. They Dude, were... I wasn't buying them My back friend then. in college had a poster for Temple of Doom, and it was tw- it, it was an advertisement, and it said $27 for a VHS tape of Temple of Doom. Yeah, back then in the 80s. Uh, so, you know, the point I'm making is, though, we appreciated when a movie we liked came on TV. Like, hey, guess what? This movie's on TV. Oh, sweet. And we'd sit and we'd watch it. we appreciate it because we didn't have access to it all the time. And we could talk about it more. And because we didn't have access to it, we appreciated it. We enjoyed it more. Now, let me ask you this. Kids today, do you think if they were to pick a movie on Netflix and watch it, do you think they'd be like, oh, that was awesome. I'm going to re-watch this over and over and over again because it was so good and I want to talk about it more. Or do you think they're like, okay, I saw it, next one. I think it takes a different kid because uh, it's a good, good, a good thought. Um, Celine, that's a name. Uh-huh, a name in the world. Okay. In the world. Anyway, <laughs> let's just go with a random person. Anyways, her, her kid, <laughs> totally Blake. <laughs> We're trying to not and <laughs> just go. kids too now. And huh? go. Are we talking niece, about other her things? knees? Okay, her knees. <laughs> Inside niece, jokes, people. She was babysitting her uh, her kids. Yes, and they were um, they just wanted to watch Frozen right. over and over again. So younger kids okay. will do will will want to watch. If they think think the movie's great. That's a great. They point. They will watch it over and over again. You can watch YouTube videos of parents going insane watching and listening yes. to Let It Go over and over again. That's a great. So point. they will watch movies over 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 again. Mm-hmm. So that's a great point. So I don't know how like the media platforms these days. I, I don't know. Do you think it's a generational thing? Because Probably. little kids for sure, because they're still learning and growing. So I can see that. Mm. Let's throw it in the category of 13 year olds to 17 year olds. Do you think they would watch something over and over again? Because I get the impression that they're like, they're, they're already bored watching five minutes into a movie. Like, cause they're always on their phones. They're always doing other things. Like, do you, them. Do you really think? Like, you know what I mean? I don't know. I, to me, I but, just, Yeah, it probably is. Because little kids, you just want to watch the same thing over and over again. You don't know any better. But as a, uh, a pre-teen or a teen weenie or what do you want to call them, mm-hmm. they, for sure, are probably bored within 10, 15 minutes into something. And they'll probably watch it and say they watched it and move on. 
Well, it's interesting. And a lot of things we find interesting are things they have to watch for school, and mm-hmm. they that shuts them out. Sure. Well, the idea of uh, it's getting off subject because I don't want to get off television because it's kind of what I was talking about today. Mm-hmm. The comic book world. It used to be a comic would run 500 books, right? It this is book 293, the 50th issue or the 100th <sighs> issue. Now they are recycling it. They start ground zero every year now. It's books. They have number ones every year. The attention span of the generation yes. is shorter. It's Millennials shorter. are very short. Yep. And not only that, it's almost like, well, we're gonna we're gonna carry this book for a year, twelve issues, and then we'll see if it was popular enough to do another twelve. Instead of just going, you know, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight for year two, it's literally book one again. To you know, like the, the Star Wars is an example. There there was a Vader book. It lasted twelve issues, and now. This week, it's going to be Vader something else, and it's number one. So it's still the same story. It's still continuing the same story. But for whatever reason, they felt the need to, to change the title and create a number one again. I don't know if people see that one and they think, oh, it's going to be worth money. Or they're just saying, no, we don't know how long it's going to last. That could be it. But people money. are catching on to that and getting tired of it. You know, Because mm. getting back to the, the reinventing of shows and comics... It's like it's almost like they don't have enough faith in their products anymore, so they know it's not going to last. So they're like, and the attention span so is the attention span of the American people so quick that even in TV they're doing because like for example Transformers came out with a cartoon show, it is brand new and it, it's already canceled. It it has like maybe twenty six episodes. You don't want to hear my whole theory of. Uh... Short attention spans in America, dream and all that. Fair enough. Because we can go into some dark, but do you dark think, stuff. Because sure. my whole theory on that, just a real quick to touch on uh-huh. it, is that the media is trying to keep you occupied. And I believe ma- that. And they're making us have short attention spans. I believe that. The I was more, just gonna, well, I was just going to ask more, you, do you think the media is the reason why we have short attention spans? Yes, because they're trying, um, pretty much, if you notice, a lot of things are going on in our world today. This oh, is yeah. only off topic of top entertainment. No, I mean, I, I guess it is involved in entertainment because media... I consider they, the news biggest they, form of they fake media. literally are handing us stuff in our hands, like an iPod, an iPhone, and going, ooh, pretty, right. and it distracts us, and then they change legislature over here without us knowing. Yes. They throw some bullshit crime scene over here yeah. and then change something else over here. Sure. They do, they've been doing that... For years. And, and this will be the last entertainment podcast because the government's shutting us down right now. I'm just kidding. I'm making that up. The FCC won't let us be. <laughs> All right. That's oh, but, a, no, but I agree with you on that. You know what? That's they another... are definitely, and they're trying to keep us dumb, and they're trying to keep us uneducated on that level, just because as long as they give us bullshit media, because everyone likes to see violence in television. Well, I think Violence in the media. Violence in the news. Let's get back on that, because uh, that's a great point. I, I will, I'll steer away from news and politics right now, but I will. I agree with you, and I'll give you an example. Reality television. I despise it. I hate it. I loathe it. Any other nasty word you can think of, I just want to... If I could punch reality not television... not even freaking reality. If I could punch reality television in the face, I would. I boycott it, I never watch it, and I yell at my wife every time she watches it. It's just like, to me, it's garbage. It's straight up garbage. I don't know if we're talking about media platforms anymore. Yeah, yeah I don't know. But my point, no, but it's important because that's all that's on television right now, is reality TV. And it's even, not even reality. And I've even, worked on a couple of reality shows of where they- Of course not. Uh, it's all staged. It's scripted, yeah. It's completely scripted. Some but, of the words they use are not, are not scripted, right. but they're sent to go in a certain direction. Right, they're told to do a certain thing a certain yes. way. And here's the thing about that. The sick part is the reality-based platform or what, I don't know what you call it, um, plan. Uh, it's being implemented into what used to be television shows. Like, for example, The Muppets. You know, like that show, the Muppets on their own, their characters and their the situations were funny on their own, but now they put them in a in a reality TV based environment. And I gotta be honest with you, it kind of cheapens it for me. It actually makes me almost despise the show. I I love the characters, but watching them do reality television gags, sight gags in a Muppet show, cheapens. The Muppets, in my opinion, I think it actually cheapens the jokes. It's the Muppets were funny; they didn't need to do like reality TV sp- spinoff type version of them. But I believe they're doing that because they're trying to go with the generation, what it is, and that's what 
But People. you're getting majority, back... Majority. You're not a majority, sorry. No, no, no. A majority but, watches reality TV shows and the ratings prove it. And that's, that's a great disgusting. point. disgusting. But let me ask you this. I blame Survivor and reality. But let me, let me ask you this, though. I, I believe this. I don't know if you would. But, you know, if you wanted to brainwash the public and tell them what they like, which is what media does anyways, mm-hmm. you would just put out shows. Force feed it. You know, like, that's what Cartoon Network did. They started out with playing a whole bunch of great old cartoons like Flintstones and a whole bunch of other stuff, uh, Looney Tunes. And then what happened was they had one 20-minute show once a week called Cartoon Cartoon or something like that. And they or they or and all they did was they had their Hanna-Barbera artists kind of come up with gag sketches. And then the audience would vote on those sketches to see which ones they liked and didn't like. And the ones that survived got eventually started getting a show and then one show became two shows two shows Shiny became Bravo, three shows Powerpuff and the Girls, next thing you know the entire channel is that kind of media and you have nothing that originally started it you have they did start keeping the original stuff though during certain times it's all gone now well, in they fact moved it onto their old network called boomerang well if you notice that's what they did they mm-hmm. created a separate channel called boomerang so now they have their channel. That so it was a brilliant it was marketing a paid channel too. You if you want that's it. right. You, you have, have to pay, pay for it. it, and it was a brilliant marketing plan because they it's like a drug dealer. They enticed you with stuff you remembered, but then they started shoveling their stuff down your stuff. And business. now, but no. But my point is, they shovel Cartoon Network shovels what they want you to see down your throat, and that's what makes it popular. And what I'm saying with something like the Muppets is they could have made a Muppets show again, and people would probably have accepted it. Without having it to be this reality, they were spin-off. trying to modernize it. That's what they were trying to do. Well, because if you think about it, or I remember Muppets back in the old days was on. A, it was a theatrical show, like mm-hmm. a, uh, um, I want to say like a, a, not a burlesque, but a. It was a variety show, more or less, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. On, uh, on stage, and they always brought a guest star in. Well, now. Right. They're doing it on the in the kind of like modern day and yes. it's a night show. It's a tribute and I get that. And, and that's they, why I appreciate just, it. They just executed it a little weird. Sure. Sure. And I appreciate the idea behind it. So they are taking some of the old and merging with the and, new. And they've cut back on the newer episodes, have cut back on um the personal interviews. Oh, so really? now it's less uh, they made jokes about it because uh-huh. Kermit would talk to himself and he'd be like, "No, I'm talking to you, Bear." <laughs> he goes, oh, that's how you do one of those interview things. And he goes, I just can't. I'm not talking to myself, am I? That's good. Well, I maybe mean, they're changing the format. They, I think they may be because also almost got canceled already. Yes. Well, I knew that too. So I knew that too. Definitely people. Well, plus the, the adult different. jokes were too adult. They were I think. too adult. Yes. You know, I mean, people they weren't candid appreciated or... the inside jokes. Adults appreciate inside jokes that the kids wouldn't get. Mm-hmm. And now it's straight up like, you know, I'm surprised they didn't have the band rolling joints in one scene, you know what I mean? Because that's, that's, that's kind of where it went. Mm-hmm. But we're, we're getting close to running out of time. I personally feel that society has lost something special. Uh, I feel bad for any of my nieces and nephews or kids that I may have uh, that are going to grow up not knowing what it's like to wake up Saturday morning early in their PJs to eat cereal, to not only watch cartoons that they might enjoy, but also see toy commercials that are catered to them specifically for certain holidays or things like that. They won't wake up at all. Saturday. No. That's just marketing too. It's just to get brainwashing too. That was a form of brainwashing too. It was, it. but it was to me, it was special because it only came on at that time. It was. So if you had a sleepover or if you had your friends over, it was everyone knew at this time you have to do this. And now, in my opinion, it doesn't exist. You can do it whenever. So who gives a shit? Who gives a you shit? You know what I'm saying? Christmas comes the day after Halloween. Yeah, exactly. There's no so, Thanksgiving. No anymore. Thanksgiving specials. Nothing. You know, Charlie mm-hmm. Brown Thanksgiving or whatever. None of that. Thank you. The artist is dead. Planes, trains, and automobiles. <laughs> they, they still do it. Kids right. save Santa. Kids save Santa. So I'll leave the final thoughts to you. What What do you think about it? Do you like this new world we're living in or do you miss the old one? I think we're advancing a little much. Like I said, it's a lot of distractions. Um, there's going to be a point where... Uh, the American people, the middle class, I guess you'd say, who are going to finally snap out of it and realize what's been happening Mm -hmm. and where it goes from there, who knows? That can go down a deeper and darker subject matter. Sure, for a later time. Probably not for a later time. It's probably (laughs) had nothing to do with media. But the way it is, I mean, it's kind of... It's hard to say. I like it, but at the same time, I know what you're talking about, the nostalgia of it. Mm -hmm. So... 
to me, I enjoy that I can watch all what I want when I want it because I have that antsiness. Sure. But at the same time, I don't have time to watch television anymore anyways anymore. That's true. So the way it's going, I, I don't know how the generation, it, only time will tell. I mean, yeah. I know they are losing something special for sure, and they're not going to have ever have that. Yeah. And, but we have it. But then again, if you go back even to our grandparents, we're never going to know about you know toys on strings. Right. You know, and have that nostalgia. Well, they were even more creative. Yeah. They were outside. Even exactly. They which I would, and I feel like children these days have been losing that more and more. Sure. And especially much more since new video game systems, more reality, and all that. So oh, yeah. Definitely, newer um, kids of these days are losing parts of themselves that they are. Well, not they're not finding. kids; they're adults. They're just not finding themselves like they should. Exactly. So that's a great point. I mean, well, thank you. That was good. I mean, thank you for listening to uh, Joel and Matt on Entertainment Banner. And uh, we'll see you next time. Take care. I'm done. And here we go on to the next one.